Hey guys, welcome to our next lesson in Unit 4 Genetics um, Pedigree Charts. You need your science notebook. Um, you're going to be taking notes on um, pedigrees, and so you can see mine right here. Um, I, of course, like different colors, so feel free to use different colors if you would like. Um, I put everything that I want you to write down in green, so please copy down what is in green. Feel free to pause as you watch this um, on Edpuzzle, or um, you can look at the slides like separately um, afterwards and copy it down. Either way, however you want to do it. So let's get going. Um, so what is a pedigree? It is a chart of the genetic history of family over several generations. So um, I want you to think about like back when you were in elementary school and they had you do your family tree. And so it was like at the bottom with your mom and dad or your grandparents who ever started your family, however far back your elementary school teachers made you go. And then it would branch up and then the branches would go out of all of the different people in your family. Um, so this is similar except for it's going to start with the first generation or the parents and then it's going to come down to the kids that they have and then it's going to come down to the kids that they have um, and it's going to show um, how different genetic traits are being passed down. Um, so not necessarily just relationships between family members. It's also going to be showing who is affected by one specific trait. Each different pedigree would show you a different specific trait. So if you're going to track um, something like brown eyes, eye color, um, you would specifically track that brown eye trait um, going down through the pedigree. If you were going to track a different trait, you would need a different pedigree. So we're going to use our knowledge from Punnett squares to kind of help us with pedigrees. Um, and what they both kind of have in common is they both are looking at probabilities of being able to pass on those traits to the offspring or to the children. Um, so this is really big in uh, a lot of people that want to see if a specific disorder that they have um, that is maybe not very positive, how it would affect their future generations. So um, I want you to copy down these symbols as well. I'm sorry, that picture is a little fuzzy. Um, but these are important to just pedigrees in general and being able to read and analyze a pedigree. So first, most important, you need to know male and female. Male is going to be symbolized by a rectangle female being symbolized by a circle. Um, I'm sorry, we should say male is a square. And so I always tell my kids about this, like you can think like females are softer and sweeter and so they're a circle and then males are normally like rough and gruff and that's not very like, uh, what should I say, going with the times. Um, but that's just a way to remember it. Uh, affected individuals are going to be colored in or shaded in. Um, and then I put a little arrow to kind of go down a carrier, um, which would be the heterozygous. Um, they're going to be half colored in. So um, what I mean by that is let's say the affected individual um, is someone with brown eyes. Um, so maybe, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's do something different. Let's say the affected individual has um, sickle cell anemia. That's something that Ms. Um, Henderson talks about, uh, I guess, in our pennant. No, no, no. In our uh, co-dominance and incomplete dominance video. So let's say the affected individual has sickle cell anemia because that's recessive. So that's what Miss Henderson taught us. So recessive meaning that they have two lowercase alleles or um, the genotype, let's say, is lowercase s, lowercase s. So let's say a parent was a carrier of sickle cell anemia. Um, then we would color half of their um, shape in so that we would be able to see that they're carrying one of those lowercase s's um, but they don't themselves have sickle cell anemia. We're going to talk about that more. Um, mating or when two people are married or having offspring um, they're going to be connected with a line um, and then offspring are going to come down off of that line and kind of make their own 
lines. Um, so it's when you have like a really big pedigree, you have to be able to see, okay, who's brother and sister and who's actually married. So if they're married, the line is going to connect the two, almost like a pair of glasses, like the line right in the middle, that's like they're married or they're mating. Um, and then if they're just brother and sister, they don't have the line in between their shapes. They have it kind of like over their head and over. Um, we're going to symbolize them with Roman numerals over on the side for the generations. So you can see first generation has a one Roman numeral and then second de generation goes down to um, a two in Roman numerals. And then you would say like the generation dash their number to determine like each individual. So like for this first circle right here, um, this would be two dash one, this would be two dash two um, to talk about those different children. Okay, so nothing to write on here, all in white writing, but um, what does a pedigree chart look like? So this is a pedigree chart right here. You can see our first generation, second generation, third generation. Um, you can see connected who's married, who are children, Sorry, don't look at my like janky lines or anything like that. I know they're not really perfect. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but you can see a lot of different relationships here. So again, this is just basic. We haven't looked at any traits yet. Nobody's carrying anything, anything like that. Just looking at a basic pedigree chart. So now let's get into like interpreting a pedigree chart and what's important um, and why. So the first thing is determining whether a disorder is dominant or recessive. So the biggest determining factor if a trait that's being passed down through generations is dominant or recessive is if it skips generations or if it doesn't. So normally a disorder that is dominant the parents are going to have the disorder. Um, and then they will not, cannot skip generations as they go down. Because if the parents are carrying that and it's dominant, then that means that they're either homozygous dominant or they can be heterozygous. So if they're homozygous dominant, they're definitely 100% passing down um, that trait. Let, let's say capital A, capital A. All they have to pass down is the capital A. If they're heterozygous, then they have a capital A, lowercase a. There's a 50-50 shot if they're passing down the capital A or the lowercase a. Um, if it is recessive, then normally the parents do not show um, the trait. And so they're probably heterozygous because they have um, the uh, capital letter and then the lowercase letter to be heterozygous. Um, in a recessive disorder, it can skip generations in the pedigree. So we're going to look at examples so you can know what it looks like. Um, I have two like written examples and I have two uh, pedigree examples that we're going to copy down. So here's the first written example. So you don't have to copy this, but um, Huntington's disease is a dominant disorder. So which is rare for something that is not a very positive thing. So Huntington's disease really affects your brain. Um, and we know from human body systems how all of our body systems are connected. So then if a person's not able to cognitively like think through or tell their different body parts what to do, um, they just kind of start to shut down. So um, this is dominant, which means if you have this disease, that means you have the two capital alleles or a capital allele lowercase allele. So homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Um, and that's, I just explained this on the next page. So I won't try and read everything to you. I'll let you read some of it. Um, so sickle cell anemia, again, not having to read um, or write anything on here. So is a recessive disorder. Um, and again, kind of like how Miss Henderson was talking about this before. So that means that for someone to show that they have sickle cell anemia, they have to have two lowercase alleles. So they had to get a lowercase or recessive um, allele from their mom and a recessive allele from their 
dad um, so that they have two lowercase letters in their genotype. So now I want you to copy this down, example of a pedigree chart, and I have two of these for us. So we, I want you to try and figure out, is this pedigree chart dominant or is this recessive? So there was a main thing that I told you to think about to tell if it's dominant or recessive, and it deals with skipping genera generations versus not skipping generations. So I want you to pause here, copy this into your notebook. I copied it into mine so you can even see like I copied it um, it doesn't have to be perfect just you know a little scribble um, just so that you have this to look back on so pause here and answer is it dominant or recessive so hopefully you got that it was dominant um, you can see there are kind of two big things to look at one you have effective affected individuals in each generation it did not skip any generations and in the first generation you have a dad and a mom that are both um, affected they pass it down to their kids and then so on and so forth um, I wanted to make a connection here with a Punnett square to kind of show how we're going to take pedigrees and connect them to Punnett squares so that we can figure out um, all of these different individuals um, genotypes or the letters that go with it. So you can see right here, this is this mom and dad right here, okay? So we know that this is dominant, so passing down the affected individuals, the colored in, shaded in individuals are carrying a dominant um, trait. So we know that that means the dad right here, which is on the top, um, has to have at least one upper uppercase or um, capital letter. So we also know that because his children did not all, have, they were not all affected, that he also has to have at least one lowercase letter. You can see the mom right here has to be two lowercase letters, lowercase d, lowercase d, because um, she is not affected. So she has to be lowercase d, lowercase d. If she had a capital letter, she would be shaded in two. So you can see then how the kids um, inherited the trait. So you can see that the middle sibling right here, so this is like the middle sister, um, was affected. So that means that she must have gotten the capital D from her dad and the lowercase d from the mom, um, where the older brother must have gotten the lowercase d and the lowercase d, and then the younger sister, the lowercase d, lowercase d. So you can see from this Punnett square that it really was a 50-50 chance on if this was passed down um, to the next generation. Then you can see that this female, this youngest sister, got married to somebody that was affected as well. We already know that she's recessive, lowercase d, lowercase d. So then for this person right here, we know they have to be heterozygous or capital D, lowercase d, because of how their children are. Okay, another example for you. Pause, write it down, tell me what you think, dominant or recessive. Hopefully you said recessive. Um, so you can kind of see in this one that the parents were not affected. Um, and so as this was being passed down, it was being passed down um, on the recessive or the lowercase letter. Um, so for instance, these two right here, um, neither are affected. So we know that it's not being passed down through the capital letter. Um, so they must have passed down, oh, they must have passed down um, lowercase, if we're thinking the D's again, lowercase D, lowercase D. My pedigree is missing a line right here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, they must have passed down lowercase D, lowercase D to then this, for this child to be affected. Look at the Punnett square here. This child only had a 25% chance of being affected by whatever this trait is, um, which is just so interesting. A little fun fact uh, on dominant versus recessive. So some things that are dominant, uh, you wouldn't think are dominant. For instance, having six fingers is dominant. So all of us that have five fingers, that's recessive. 
how crazy is that? So that's something you can track. Um, I forget how you say it. It's like polydactyl or something like that. Google it. It's interesting. Okay. So one thing I just want to point out, I don't know if this is a good question. What would you change about this chart? But maybe what would we go deeper in with this chart? Um, we could do so much. We could label each of these like generation one, generation two, generation three. We could label below them all of their um, genotypes. Because this is recessive, we could show way better on this pedigree would have been to show who was a carrier and who wasn't a carrier, especially when something is recessive, because then you're trying to track, well, who is carrying this? If it's dominant, we know if they're um, heterozygous, they already are affected already. So that's the big one. The last like kind of big thing that I want to go through is if things are sex linked, pedigrees going through the trait, is the trait sex linked or is it autosomal? I think I say that right. <laughs> um, so if it's sex linked, that means it's on the X or Y chromosome, um, specifically following that one chromosome or one chromosome pair, if you want to think about it that way, um, 23 pairs, 46 total. So um, the example that I put on here is hemophilia, which is a blood disorder. Um, so just reading here, in which certain blood, blood clotting factors are not produced. So that just means like if you were to get cut or something, your blood doesn't clot and stop it from bleeding. It just keeps bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Um, this results in excessive bleeding that can damage organs and tissues. Hemophilia is X-linked recessive trait caused by a gene mutation. It is more often seen in men than women. So, interesting. Autosomal just means it's not carried on the um, sex linked, so it's carried on the other 22 um, pairs. So, an example of this, cystic fibrosis is one of the most common inherited single gene disorders. People with cystic fibrosis secrete abnormal body fluids, including unusual sweat and thick mucus, um, which prevents the body from properly cleansing the lungs. The mucus interrupts the function of vital organs and leads to chronic infections. Um, there's a movie about cystic fibrosis. I think it's kind of like um, a chick flick, but I think it's called Six Feet Apart, which is ironic right now. Maybe it's five feet apart. Maybe like two people that want to be a couple. But anyways, go watch. So in summary, about pedigrees, um, they're just like family trees, but your genetic hi history um, used to find out the probability of a child having a disorder in a particular family. Um, that's it. That's all I have for you today. Please, if you have questions, feel free. So come into my office hours, go into Ms. Henderson's office hours um, and ask questions. Um, I have a quizzes for you to practice with after you're done with this Ed Puzzle. Um, if you made below a 60, make sure you email your teacher to get it reset. Hopefully you don't because I made really easy questions. So hope you're having a great Monday and um, hopefully you learned something. Miss you guys.